Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's me, Sour Gaming, bringing you another GTA Online video. In today's video, we're going to be looking at a top 5 list of the top 5 vehicles that had really good potential, but Rockstar didn't give it what it deserved. Now, these vehicles are uncommon, however, I think Rockstar could easily make them better so we or so the people could buy them. I will be explaining how I think Rockstar will fi could fix these vehicles, but I would like to hear your guys' opinion as well. Um, let me know what you guys think about this list. Let me know if you take away vehicles from this list, if you'd add more to this list, and let me know if you want a part two. But let's go ahead and get it started. Starting off at the number five spot, we have the Technical Aqua. Technical Aqua was introduced in the Import and Export DLC with an asking price of $1.4 million, or you could get it for a trade price of $1,120,000, making it a pretty no, it's kind of expensive. It's in the middle, I would say, for weaponized vehicles nowadays. Um, but you had to complete the special vehicle work assigned for the truck. But now, when I first saw this truck, I thought, wow, this thing is so cool. But when I called it in, I immediately regretted buying this car. The main reason was because it is incredibly slow in the water. Now, just to put this in perspective for you guys, it is really, really slow, and it's a very, it's a sitting duck, literally, on the water. I know it's kind of a punny thing, but that's just, that's just the truth. The Blazer Aqua is a much better vehicle for getting it, you know, it's a pretty cheap vehicle, but it's also way better. And I think Rockstar could fix this by just making it faster on the water and giving it some explosive resistance. I mean, this thing only takes one rocket, which is incredibly disappointing with today's standards with Oppressor Mark II's and Deluxo's and all these new planes and all that stuff. And I think it really deserves some better and it deserves better love for that matter. Okay, at the number four spot, we have the Dune FAV. You knew this one was coming. Uh, the Dune FAV came out in the gun running update with the asking price of $1.1 million or a trade price of $850,000. Now you could also get this vehicle free when, with the Criminal Enterprise Starter Pack, but that's up to you if you want to get that or not. Um, I remember seeing this vehicle on Twitter actually of how excited people were when they saw this car in the trailer or the first few screenshots for that matter. But unfortunately when it released, people were so disappointed with a lot of things about it. For starters, it only takes one explosive to destroy it, which is a huge downfall. Also, the guns cannot be operated by the driver while it's moving, which I do not understand why. It, it should be a remote-controlled uh, gun instead of a, you know, something that someone else has to operate. And it also is a very, very vulnerable vehicle. But it's also, and the most important thing for a lot of solo players, it's the worst nightmare if you're a solo player. I mean, you have to you have to switch seats when it's stationary. You have to use it, and the gun on it is very weak. You know, it it's strong, but it's very it's a very weird angle on the gun. It can't aim side to side. It can only aim in the front, which is pretty pointless nowadays with all the other vehicles we have. But I also think that it should count as a special vehicle, so it's easier to call in. I think that would be a really cool addition. You know, unlike the Oppressor Mark II, I think that this thing is not overpowered in any way. And I think it also, like the Technical Aqua, deserves an armor buff. And, uh, you know, this vehicle is a hu was a huge disappointment when it first came out. And I think it deserves a better care. Okay, at the number three spot, we have the Kara Kara. This is another weaponized vehicle with, like the Technical and the Technical Aqua, it has its downfalls as well. Um, this was introduced in the San Andreas Racing Update, which came out in March of 2018. So, it had an asking price of $1.775 million, making it a very expensive vehicle without a trade price. And the reason why I wanted to put this vehicle on the list is because, man oh man, did this vehicle deserve more than it has today. I feel like this could be the number one spot, but there's a vehicle that's really, really on the number one spot. And, uh... What I think this vehicle had a big letdown was, is because it cannot take any explosions. I mean, that's a huge disappointment. I think any vehicle that has a mounted gun deserves to take some explosive hits. Because, you know, Mark IIs can easily take a character down without any problem. And it's just, it's a shame. And I also think that the biggest letdown for me and a lot of other players was the fact that the gun was fixed on this vehicle. I feel like, you know... This vehicle, you know, it's based off the Ford Raptor 
6x6, which in and of itself is a really cool vehicle. Now, the Contender is very similar in its own way, but I really think that it deserved to have a option to remove the gun so you could turn it into just an off-road truck like the Dubsta 6x6. I think that would have been really cool. And they really missed out on that opportunity because they could have easily charge, you know, $200,000 to remove the gun and people would do it. So that's just a huge disappointment for me. Um, I think the easiest way for Rockstar to improve this vehicle would be an option to get rid of the gun, making it a non-weaponized vehicle, which I would really like and a lot of people would as well. And I also think that because it's weaponized, it needs to be able to survive, like we mentioned earlier, at least seven to eight explosions. All the vehicles on this list today are very weak. That's one thing they have in common. Uh, there's a few planes and whatever, but I really think these vehicles deserve more credit than what they have already. Okay, so at the number two spot, guys, we actually have the Ruiner 2000. You might be surprised by this. You might be like, well, what are you talking about? It's a really nice vehicle. Well, there's a lot of downfalls with it. This vehicle also came out in the Import-Export DLC with an asking price of $5.7 million, making it the third most expensive vehicle on the Warstock website, but it also had a trade price of $4,320,000. Um, when this vehicle first released, it was actually um, any air vehicle's worst nightmare, especially helicopters, due to its really good missiles. Now, in, before any of the other vehicles like the Deluxo, the Vigilante, the Oppressors, this vehicle was the king of just everything in general. Like, you could, you could easily take down Mark IIs, you know, not Mark IIs back in the day, but you get the point. Helicopters had really, really, they had a big fear of this thing. Now, look at it today. Okay, so in today's terms, this vehicle is probably one of the worst in the game right now. And it's mainly because it doesn't have any explosive resistance. I mean, this vehicle is obsolete nowadays with the Mark II, the Deluxo. The Deluxo can easily crush this. Now, I'm not saying it will not get destroyed as well, but the Deluxo is a way better vehicle for an even better price, you know. The only good thing about this vehicle is that the mission that comes with it with the uh, CEO menu is really good against Mark IIs. I really think that this vehicle is one of the best ways to counter Mark IIs, but it's only with the special vehicle work, which I'm not really a huge fan of. I really wish we could use this, you know. During the mission, it actually has lock-on immunity, meaning other missiles can't lock onto it excluding the terabyte now the terabyte can lock onto this vehicle and uh they just need to make it have more armor as well as increasing the missile capacity to at least 20 missiles and that way this vehicle will be balanced to today's terms okay so we have a few special mentions on our list the first one being the vigilante now you guys might be surprised but this vehicle really disappointed me not when it came out but just rockstar's take on this vehicle so the vehicle came out with this smuggler's run update with an expensive price tag of 3.7 million dollars. This vehicle is right behind, almost right behind the Ruiner 2000. Now this car is a really good vehicle, it's actually the fastest car in the game, but the one thing that really makes me upset at Rockstar with this car, it has never been on sale. You know, it's been out for two years and still no sale, that's just, that's just not right. Rockstar, please make it on sale. I really would love that. Um, you know, if it was cheaper, people would buy it, but 3.7 for this thing is just way too much, Rockstar. You should know that. All right, so the second vehicle on the special mentions is the Chernobog. You might be surprised as well on this one, but this vehicle is added with the Doomsday Highs DLC with an asking price of $3.3 million or a trade price of $2.4 million. Now, although this vehicle has extremely accurate missiles that can go through buildings, it surprisingly has no armor. I also will never understand why it cannot be locked onto when there isn't a driver in it. So in case you guys are wondering what that is, if you're sitting in a Chernobog with it parked and you're in the back and you're looking at, you know, a Presser Mark II, if that Mark II can, comes over, he can lock onto you. I just, I don't understand how that's logical. I really wish they would fix that. But the armor is the main, you know, problem with this vehicle. I really think it should be able to take 10 to 13 explosions, as well as remove on the lock-on capability by the other player, 
when there isn't a driver. That way everything is fair. All right, guys. Well, at the number one spot, what do you guys think it is? Well, I'm not going to make you go in the comments, but we have the Volatile. Oh, man. Where do I begin with this vehicle? It has an asking price of $3.7 million or a trade price of $2.8 million and was released with the Doomsday Heist. This vehicle has so much wrong with it. Now, I can't even tell you all the stuff that it has wrong. First, we have to talk about what is good about it. So unlike all the other aircraft that carry bombs, this vehicle can carry 100, unlike the usual 50 by the other aircraft. However, it has a lot of weaknesses. First, it has a very annoying bug that causes it to lose the homing missile lock-on sound, meaning you have to keep an eye on your tail at all times. And when you do get struck by a homing missile, the engines will start smoking, and the second one will kill the engines. Also, this vehicle lacks in the passenger weapons. The machine guns on this plane are not explosive, unlike its bigger brother, the Bombushka. And I overall would not recommend buying this vehicle unless it has a really good sale, such as 50% off or higher. That way, they're getting it for a good price. But anyways, guys, that's going to be all for this video. Leave a like if you want to see a part two as it, of this. Because there are many more vehicles I could just keep going and keep going. That's the unfortunate part. So thank you all for watching and supporting the channel. And I will see you guys back tomorrow for a brand new video. We're back on our uh, upload schedule. So, alright guys, peace.